So if you've been using generate blocks for as long as I have, uh, you've gone through the evolution of how containers are handled. And today I want to show you how and when you should be using the outer and inner containers. Um, when's the best practice, how to make some of those tweaks and make it work for you. Uh, and just kind of walk through some of the issues you might be running into. All right, so here I've got a blank FAQ page that we're going to use to um, talk about the outer and inner containers. So if we go ahead and jump into the block editor, we can start out by adding a container. And so when we add that container, you'll see in our toolbar here, uh, we've got a few options. So we have it. add an inner container, add to container, then we've got lining text, content position, some styles and links. So um, what we really want to focus on are these container buttons. And by adding this first step of a container, this is considered your outer container. And by default, your outer container is always going to span the full width of your content area. And now what we need to really consider first is how your content area is displayed. If you have that set up in an element layout um, full width or whether that's just a default setting. So what we'll do first is what we're going to do is add a background color to our container. We'll add some padding and we'll go ahead and add a heading of some text and we'll change that to black. All right, so we'll say update, jump to our page and refresh. And there you have it. So now you can see this gray box is our outer container we inserted and it is spanning the entire width of my web page. Uh, for me personally, that's not the preferred method of approach in the design that I'm looking to achieve most of the time. Um, and so what we really need to do is insert an inner container on this outer container so that the width of our text stays within my 1200 pixel global container width. This is set up within Generate Press in your customizer settings um, and can be tweaked there if you wish for it to be bigger or smaller. Now, the first thing we need to go take a look at is my site layout element. So I have an element, uh, layout element where the content is set on the content area to full width, no padding. Now, if I change this to default, which is the default setting before I ever set this up, go ahead and click update, come back to our website. You'll see everything, including that outer container I inputted is going to be within my global container width. So, um, really, if you're looking to achieve sections that you want the background colors to span the full width of your page, you're going to want to set up an element layout and change the content to full width and ensure that display rules are set to entire entire site. So we'll update that refresh. And once again, you can see it jumps back to full width. Now, what we need to do is in this outer container is add an inner container. However, because we've already added some, a headline in here, um, the button to add an inner container disappeared on us. So what we can do is click our headline and insert a new line and insert our container manually ourselves. And we can drag this text into our container that we've added. So you can see, and what you want to make sure is that second container is nested within your outer container. Now it might feel like, okay, I've got an inner container. I'm good to go. We can hit update, go take a look at it. And nope, nothing's changed. That's because this container um, has no restraints to it. it. The global width is not applied to it for your container. So if we come to our sizing panel and in the max width, we're going to hit this global icon. This is going to automatically apply your global width that you have set up in your theme. Um, and you can see it's grayed out. I have 1200 pixels. And the next thing we need to do to make sure that this content is centered on your page and not on the left is do a left and right margin of auto. So we'll go ahead and click update, come to our page, hit refresh and boom, there we go. 
So now we've added an inner container to our outer container that's holding our content within it. And as you can see, it's lined up perfectly with our uh, H1 title. Um, and it also lines up here on the right side. So now that that inner container is placed, it's gonna withhold and keep all of our content inside 1200 pixels. Now, of course, if you know from the get-go that you want an inner container, my best suggestion for the fastest and easiest method is to go ahead and hit add inner container as soon as you add that outer container first. So this is already going to apply those um, settings for you with the max width and the auto left and right margin. Um, it's just quicker and easier since it does it for you. And always remember though, the outer container, I treat it like my background. The inner container is my foreground, what's on top of that background. So I treat this for color, background colors, patterns, images, you know, if you have background images. Um, and then the inner container is my content, my copy, um, images on top. And so if we go ahead and color our background here on this container, and then on our inner container, we can add a background color there a little bit darker for you and let's add some padding and go ahead and hit update refresh oh, we didn't add any content so it's not showing um, so we'll add a heading again this is a heading and change that to black hit update and refresh and so now you can see this light gray background is our outer container this dark gray inner with the heading is our inner container. And it looks much like the top container we dealt with and created a little bit more manually. Um, and you could just see a little bit better the constraints it's holding in the box. This dark box is your 1200 pixel width. Now to dive it into a little bit further, um, how I also treat inner and outer containers when it comes to padding and margin. I always like to apply padding around my inner containers within my outer container. So my outer container is going to dictate uh, the padding around that intersection, right? So I don't actually utilize any of the spacing um, section, obviously besides the auto, just to make sure it's centered on my page uh, within my intersection because I don't want that. I prefer to utilize the outer container. So in the outer, as I did earlier, it's where I use the top, left, right, and bottom uh, padding as well. So when you insert a new section again, and we'll say uh, container, choose a container, add an inner container. We want our outer container to always have our padding. And I always do left and right padding on my outer container as well because when you get down to the mobile version, um, that padding takes place to keep your text within uh, a mobile screen and not touching edge to edge. So if you were to come to this one and remove that left and right uh, padding, you would see now our text is actually touching the edges on mobile, which is really not preferred. So um, it's best practice and what I always do is go ahead and just add that padding in left and right on your outer container and it will help responsibly keep your text within uh, off the edges. So for me, 90% of the time or so, I'm always using a inner container within my outer container because my designs and the way I lay out web pages I'm constantly wanting that content to be within my 1200 pixel container width. There are the occasional sections, maybe like calls to action, or um, maybe it's a blog Im featured image that you want to kind of break the edge and push it out of your contained width that might span 1400 pixels or whatever you might be. And you can manipulate that and you know, suit it to your liking and of course don't have to utilize that 1200 pixel inner container on everything. At the end of the day, what's most important is to be consistent. Whenever you're building out websites, you want a system and a process so that it's predictable and easier for you to know how you're going to build out sections and pages using those outer and inner containers. 
Thanks a lot for watching, and if you enjoy my videos, be sure to help support by liking the video below and subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot, guys.